Hi, welcome everybody to this webinar, to this ERG webinar. So thank you for registering. And uh, I see we have a lot of uh, attenders today. So today we're going to talk about the Integrative Research Group, a group of the Global Research Alliance. And this webinar will talk about the links of this ERG uh, with another project and initiative that works on the field of soy carbon sequestration to adapt and mitigate uh, climate uh, change. So today, as you may know, we have um, three panelists that I'm going to present. First, we have uh, Pamela Juice. Uh, Pamela, she's an ERG coacher. Uh, she's based in Canada and senior soil and nutrient management specialist. We also have um, Jean-François Susanna, also ERG coacher, and she, he is a coordinator of the CIRCASA project. He is here with me. We are based in Paris. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then we have, we have uh, also Paul Lou. He's the executive secretary of the 4 per Meal Initiative. Um, uh, launched in uh, 2015 at the COP21. He is also based in Paris. So first we're going to have these three presentations about different projects and initiatives. Uh, we are going to talk about their linkage. And after this presentation, we will have a time to answer all your questions and, um, and to have a little discussion with the uh, attenders if you want to. So, for those who is the first time in a webinar, I do I just uh, remind you that your microphones are not activated. But if you want to make some questions, you can always use the chat room at your right side of the screen, or you can raise your hand, and we will try to answer to all the questions at the end of the presentation. So now I'm going to give uh, the floor to Pamela. So please, Pamela, she will present the network and activities of the ERG. Please, Pamela, you have the floor. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, we, we can hear you. Okay. Can you see my screen? We can see the screen. Thank you, Pamela. Okay. And I will let you uh, try to um, show the a uh, picture of me on the video if it if it works for you. <laughs> All right, so um, I will be presenting today on behalf of the other co-chairs for Integrative Research Group, including myself, uh, Jean-Francois, who you've been introduced to, and also Beverly Henry, who is our newest IRG co-chair from Australia. The purpose really of today's presentation there we go, is to provide an overview of the integrative research group of the Global Research Alliance on Agricultural Greenhouse Gases. I wanted to talk a little bit about its history and evolution, vision and scope, and the networks and their activities. I'm going to assume that you know a little bit about the Global Research Alliance already um, and would ask that um, if you have more questions, you can probably check out their webpage at uh, globalresearchalliance.org. In terms of history, though, uh, the Global Research Alliance was formed in 2009 uh, with the first council meeting back in 2011. And at that time, there were three research groups initiated, the Livestock, Croplands, and Paddy Rice Research Groups. At that time, there were also some cross-cutting groups established. These were the Inventory and Measurement Issues Cross-Cutting Group and the Soil Carbon and Nitrogen Cycling Group. Each of these, uh, the research groups as well as the cross-cutting groups, had their own networks and um, uh, had their own take that off, um, some networks and activities. The cross-cutting groups had their own experts as well, and they realized that they might benefit from becoming organized as an additional research group. And so throughout 2016, um, there were several uh, briefings and discussions about starting a integrative research group, a fourth research group for the GRA. And this is a listing of some of the meetings that uh, those presentations were given at. And the driver for this was really uh, climate negotiations that were occurring that raised interest and need for integrative knowledge on agricultural greenhouse gases and mitigation in particular. So some of the uh, things happening was there was renewed interest in land-based mitigation options, um, and they're now about 
120 countries, including the land sector and their nationally determined contributions. The NDCs also included adaptation for developing countries, and there's also the Soil Carbon Sequestration Initiative 4 per thousand in the Lima Paris Action Agenda, and we'll be hearing more about that today. These um, negotiations required more integrated knowledge, uh, things such as estimating the technical potential for farms, subregions, and industries to mitigate and adapt, uh, how to monitor, report, and verify agricultural mitigation efforts, answering questions such as what is the potential for practice change for a given carbon dioxide equivalent price, and how to help countries in developing their own strategic plans and inventories. At its initiation, um, the RG had to establish a vision and scope. Each research group addresses the actual work of the GRA through work plans that bring countries and other partners together in research collaborations, in sharing knowledge and best practices, in building capability, and moving towards breakthrough solutions in addressing agricultural greenhouse gas emissions. For the integrated research group specifically, their vision was to collaborate to have collaborative work to develop the knowledge and capabilities for estimation, monitoring, and projection of GHG emissions across and within agricultural systems with a focus on soil carbon sequestration. In terms of scope of the, the research group, they include research development and knowledge transfer for a number of um, areas, particularly the integration of different scales. So looking at um, field, local, national, and supranational national scales, looking at uh, applying, reporting, monitoring, and or verifying greenhouse gas emission estimates across farming systems. Uh, communication and coordination was a very important part of the scope, as well as fostering the building of capability of member countries. One way that the um, inclusion of the integrative research group uh, with the existing GRA uh, research groups at the time was using this diagram. On the left-hand side, you can see the various um, initial three research groups and the different networks underneath them. Uh, the GRA Council itself sort of in the middle, and then the integrative research group on the right-hand side there started with five different networks. Uh, some of these were not new. They basically came from some of the pre-existing structures. So for example, the field scale modeling and the GHG inventories networks came from those initial uh, soil and carbon and nitrogen cross-cutting group and the inventories and measurements cross-cutting group. And the grasslands network was really transferred from the livestock research group. So these were seen to be, um, again, the cross-cutting um, aspects that the integrated research group could bring together. And then two additional networks, the soil carbon sequestration and regional scale modeling were built on onto that. This slide just shows another way of how the integrative research group goes from establishing objectives and basically the voluntary means of working together in conversations and through networks to try to achieve these different actions. Uh, what I really wanted to show with this slide though was the number of countries contributing to the integrative research group um, and the various networks. So we have uh, a good number of participants and also the collaborative partners and projects uh, that are connected to the integrative research group. So two of those uh, projects you're going to be hearing about today, the four per, per meal as well as Turkana. So the integrative research group is a very new research group, relatively speaking, compared to the others. Um, they have had three annual meetings now, the first one being in, in Rome, second in Paris, and our last one just in Cali this last February. The co-chairs um, have always been represented by France, Canada, and Australia. Um, a great thanks to um, Jean-Francois, who's been the continuity throughout, Brian McConkie in Canada, and Richard Eckert uh, from Australia, who, who started on uh, the co-chairs for this group. And you can see now by the third meeting, we have had a bit of turnover in the co-chairs of it uh, with myself um, from Agriculture Agri Food Canada and Beverly Henry from the Australian Centre for International Agricultural Research, uh, just newly joined this year. But for being around for only three years, we have had um, some good achievements within the network. Uh, these are some of the, the main achievements of the, the different networks. And I'm not gonna go through them 
all individually, but you will see that um, the type of work uh, tends to be uh, things like intercomparison of models. Uh, that's been a large part of both the soil carbon sequestration and the field integration network. And there have some been, been some good publications from these, um, especially um, reviews as well, systematic reviews um, that have been facilitated through the IRG network and really facilitating this global comparison and being able to test uh, sensitivity of, of different models. Another major contribution has been towards uh, global soil carbon modeling and maps. Um, including things such as contributions to the special report on climate change and land, uh, which was recently um, presented for the IPCC. And one of our activities coming up is a training workshop on modeling soil carbon in livestock grassland systems at the Greenhouse Gas and Animal Agriculture Conference this summer. So there's been a, a variety of work undertaken by the networks. Um, uh, you also see in the Farm and Regional Scale Integration Network there in brackets the Astrocasa H 2020 project referred to, and you will be learning more about that in the next presentation from Jean Francois. In terms of our, our current networks and, and co chairs, uh, following our meeting in February this past year, we did a little bit of reorganization again. Um, and so we are down from those five original networks to uh, three. And part of that is because um, the grasslands was essentially um, incorporated into the soil carbon sequestration network. And a lot of the, the field integration network, that fourth um, network, uh, has largely been completed. There was um, some good papers uh, published from that. And any remaining related work is uh, being accommodated within the soil carbon sequestration network or the farm and regional scale integration network. Um, a call was sent out recently for members for the newly renamed inventories and nationally determined contribution support network. Uh, we're very happy to have um, uh, five co-chairs there. Andrea Pickering uh, from New Zealand is a longest standing member of that and was able to, to get four more, more people to support her. So, um, they're newly started. Um, I'm not going to say a lot more about the, the networks today because they will be um, having opportunity to talk about specific activities with them within them in future webinars. I just wanted to highlight um, here though that uh, the Soil Carbon Sequestration Network has um, co-chairs from both Canada and France and we have a co-chair from one co-chair right now, Peter Havlick from Austria for the Farm and Regional Scale Integration Network, but we do have an opportunity to have uh, more co-chairs in that network um, as well as members. So I really encourage you, if you're interested in any of these networks, to contact um, uh, any of the co-chairs. And if you're interested in co-chairing for the Farm and Regional Scale, to contact myself or Peter Havlick. So some of the things we are following up from our meeting in February uh, include producing a series of webinars, uh, which this is the first uh, starting off today, to communicate the activities of the IRG and its, its networks. There's also um, support offered for a review paper of monitoring, reporting, and verification methods for soil carbon change. We're looking to identify partners and network members that can support the IRG, as I indicated on the, um, the prior uh, slide. And we are looking to identify funding opportunities for some of the potential projects in the networks. And one opportunity in particular uh, seemed to be exploring regional projects. Again, looking for this um, connection across systems and there are uh, people with the networks uh, doing that. Developing a work plan for more training and capability building activities, and also contributing to the science base of climate negotiations. And in particular, the coordinated via process going on uh, is having support from uh, IRG members. So with that, uh, that's really a, a background and overview of the IRG. I'm going to turn it over now back to Sari and Jean-Francois for the next presentation. Well, thank you, Pamela, for this uh, presentation. So if uh, someone has uh, one comprehensive uh, question, please uh, do not hesitate. Question uh, yes, question for clarification. Um, 
So if not, then we can also um, answer the question at the end of the presentations. So now we can give the floor to Jean-François Susana to, to, to make his presentation. So he is here uh, with me. So we're going to share the screen. Yes, hello, everybody. Um, my name is uh, Jean-François Susana. I'm a senior scientist uh, at uh, INRA uh, in France. Uh, and I'm uh, also uh, coordinating uh, this uh, project, uh, which is about uh, the coordination uh, of international research cooperation on soil carbon sequestration. And, um, oh yeah, here it is on your screen. Uh, the acronym is CIRCASA. It has received funding from uh, the European Union uh, under the Horizon 2020 program. So the aim is really to improve how we cooperate internationally on soil carbon sequestration research in agriculture. So just a few words on why we study soil carbon. Uh, this is because there are co-benefits co for climate, uh, climate adaptation, land degradation, and food security, and certainly also for climate change mitigation. We know that half of the agricultural soils are estimated to be degraded, and uh, the, lost, uh, the losses uh, of nutrients by erosion cost fertilizers, and the annual cost of those fertilizers is estimated between 100 and 200 billion of US dollars. As there are large losses of soil through erosion, and uh, we could, uh, if we were able to restore soils and uh, increase soil organic matter content, we could increase food productivity. Some estimates are around uh, 20 to 40 uh, million tons of additional grains that could be produced. And we could also reduce the yield variability after soil restoration, leading to uh, increased soil organic matter. Indeed, this is a very active uh, research area. You can see that the number of scientific papers published on uh, soil organic carbon sequestration in agriculture is increasing exponentially. And uh, this is not only with soil science, it is also with environmental sciences, ecology, agronomy, and so on. The CIRCASA project is international. It has 22 partners. Uh, you can see here the list of partners. They come from all continents. Uh, and it uh, networks uh, and is supported uh, with uh, global research plans, especially the IRG, which was uh, presented before by Pamela, with the 4 per 1,000 initiative, and uh, with European-based uh, joint programming of research on agriculture, food security, and climate change, FATCHE GPI. We also benefit from contributions in the consortium of uh, the CGIAR program on climate change, agriculture, and food security, the CCAFS program. And therefore, with that large number of member countries and also uh, of countries studied by CCAFs, uh, we have, uh, and also countries be being part of the 4 per 1,000 initiative, we have 82 countries that account together uh, to about 85% of the world's total research on soil carbon sequestration. So CIRCASA has a large potential to network and to develop a strategic research agenda shared across country uh, on soil carbon sequestration. So here are the CIRCASA goals. We would like to develop international synergies concerning research and knowledge transfer on agricultural soil carbon sequestration at the European Union level and at the global level. So this requires four steps, strengthening the international research community, improving our understanding, co-designing a strategic research agenda with stakeholders, and creating, finally, an international research consortium for a better alignment of research across countries. This diagram is a bit complex, but it shows you uh, the structure of the project in terms of its work packages. I will not enter into all details, but uh, we have a work package one which is about strengthening the research community and understanding what are uh, the knowledge gaps and what are the future needs for research. The second work, 
Mod package is about the stakeholders' views. What sort of demands have they for knowledge? What are they doing in terms of soil carbon sequestration? And what could they do if they had further knowledge? The third work package uh, will deliver a plan for the deployment of an international research consortium based on the demand of knowledge by stakeholders and on the research perspectives from the scientific community, so the supply of knowledge, if you like. And across those work packages, we have established a communication and outreach work package that has developed an open uh, collaborative platform that is now online and that I will present afterwards. Let's start with some uh, first uh, outputs of the projects on the key research challenges for soil organic carbon sequestration. And this is a questionnaire which was sent to 200 plus uh, scientists working in those areas with a majority of natural science scientists and a minority of social sciences. Uh, the challenges for research are ranked from most to least important. And you can see that interestingly, although we didn't have so many social sciences represented, uh, economics comes first. So we think that indeed economics and social cultural uh, issues are key to the adoption of soil carbon sequestration in agriculture and should be further studied. Then you have issues which are really soil science issues like the stabilization of soil organic matter, the microorganisms that contribute to the soil organic matter cycling, uh, or the soil organic carbon losses. So we have some issues which are really about agricultural options, like the vegetation ma management, the mixed agricultural options. Uh, how do we run the organic amendments? And we have some other issues I will not enter in all details, but you see that measuring and monitoring uh, and measurements of greenhouse gases and soil organic carbon are also seen as important issues. So we are developing a science research agenda from those views of the scientists. And we structure this by key challenges for future research and by key hypotheses that needs to be formulated for that research. We are also working on knowledge synthesis at international scale, and we are creating an open data repository with geospatial and modeling data. And uh, here is just one example on uh, views on how the challenges on soils are interrelated, interlinked. We have on the left um, the undegraded land that is exposed to rapid climate change. Uh, on the top right, you have degraded land exposed to rapid climate change. What we mean by rapid climate change is actually when there is a high dissimilarity between the future seasons and the current seasons based on monthly cycles of temperature and precipitations. Um, on the bottom to the left, you see the degraded land that is exposed to food insecurity and to the right, degraded land exposed to food insecurity and rapid changes in uh, seasons with climate change. <clears throat> so basically you see the overlap between individual challenges and you see that there are some hotspots in the world where we combine large challenges in terms of land degradation, climate change, and food insecurity. So creating that sort of synthesis is part of the missions we have in CIRCASA. <clears throat> to share that knowledge, we have developed an open online collaborative platform <clears throat> on agricultural soil carbon sequestration. This platform is now open. You can access it. It has a range of services ranging from matchmaking, connecting people, creating projects, and sharing uh, those projects across partners. We have knowledge sharing to discuss and share some information, some data and events. And we develop a knowledge information system where we include some uh, data. For instance, we will create an open repository of long-term soil carbon data in uh, field experiments. We are also including there some modeling results at global scale, and we will include data from partners like ISRIC on soil carbon at global scale. And uh, this is really an online community, and we would be very happy to have you part of this community. So please register on this platform 
and uh, be, you are most welcome to express your demands, share your information, and be part of this online community studying soil carbon uh, for agricultural sequestration. We have here on top the 3wocp.circasaproject.eu address to log to this platform. In Work Package 2, uh, we are working with stakeholders. We want to understand the stakeholders' perceptions on the role of soil organic carbon. And therefore, we have developed a large survey in seven languages that has been distributed through the project partners in many countries. We also organized a dozen of workshops on five continents. And uh, we benefit from the views of a stakeholder advisory board. And with those elements, uh, we are developing uh, the uh, views on uh, the knowledge demands that will complement the views from the scientists in order to develop a strategic research agenda on soil carbon sequestration in agriculture. So here are some results of the international survey for farmers, where you see that uh, we had close to 1,000 answers. And here you see options that farmers are using in their regions for soil organic carbon management starting with residue management, quite popular, manure and composting, use of cover crops, which are all very used. Then you have the tillage options, reduced or minimum tillage, zero tillage. You have some rotations, uh, grass in rotation, use of grain legumes in the rotation or cro coupling crop and livestock systems. There is also the permanent grassland management, the use of burst first strips, but to a lesser extent, and also to a lesser extent, agroforestry, biochar, or rewetting of organic soils. Interestingly, uh, we could collect views of farmers on solutions to increase adoption of soil carbon sequestration. And the first demand they have is a strengthened guidance on what to do, a strengthened advisory service for the farms, they also think it would be beneficial to raise awareness among the public about this issue, to inform better policymakers, to have tools and indicators for farmers. So these are the most important, actually, issues for them. Uh, and to a lesser extent, they would benefit from payments for ecosystem services or other funding for carbon certification schemes, mandatory targets or regulations, this is, is as important, but less than the first options. And other options like uh, compulsory standards for food uh, or improving infrastructures to access inputs are not seen as equally important. I mentioned we are trying to create an international research consortium on soil organic carbon sequestration. And uh, we here see some interest internationally the Belmont Forum, which is a forum from uh, major na national research agencies in the world targeting environment, uh, has a program on soil health. And this could prove uh, useful for, now, for our target of international research cooperation. There is also a European Joint Program on Agricultural Soils, which will have international research goals. And the European Commission will launch under Horizon Europe a mission on land degradation and soil health. So this is very useful and uh, we will see in other world regions what are the programs and try to relate those for having better alignment of research. So we are drafting now uh, the work plan uh, of this uh, International Research Consortium with support of the Research Policy Committee of CIRCASA and certainly with strong support of all our partners, the Global Soil Partnership, the GRA, FACHE, JPI, the 4 per thousand initiative. So thank you. Um, this is what I can tell you about the CIRCASA project, and I will be glad to answer questions uh, later. As you have seen, we have uh, strong uh, linkages with the GRA IRG. I think uh, the IRG is uh, developing some integration activities. It is carrying some research and networking. CIRCASA is uh, really focused on soil carbon sequestration and is trying to align research across country and develop an international research agenda. So they are complementary. And both of those activities are supported by the 4 per thousand initiative, which will now be presented by Paul Lu, the executive secretary. 
and uh, he will tell you that uh, this initiative is far beyond research. Thank you. So thank you, uh, Jean-François, for this presentation. Uh, I see uh, several questions passing if we are going to share this webinar um, recording. So the answer is yes. We're going to share a link in our Circasa webpage, web page, sorry, and in the GRA also. And we're also going to share the presentations. So this is going to be shared at the end of the webinar. Um, so if there's any question, I see, um, I see a question from Carla. Uh, from all the three initiatives, how can the private sector and the partner or participate indirectly in the in this project? So, if someone wants to answer this question, yes, maybe I can try. Uh, so, hello, Carla. Thank you for your question. Um, we we can have some uh, contacts with uh, NGOs uh, in uh, Argentina and elsewhere. Uh, and I think uh, you are welcome, first of all, to participate to uh, some uh, webinars and project meetings. Uh, but um, if we have your uh, mail address, maybe we can send you a questionnaire on what would be your views on uh, the knowledge to develop on soil carbon sequestration. And this is for CIRCASA. So thank you. Now we're, I'm going to give you the floor to uh, Paul Lu. If you can please share your presentation. We are going to. Hello, thank you to all. Uh, can you see my presentation? Uh, yes, we can. Thank you, Paul. Yes. Okay, thank you. So my name is Paul Lu. I am the executive secretary of the Four Per Mill Initiative. Uh, I thank Pamela and uh, Jean-François for the presentation they, they made before, make my job a little bit easier. And as uh, Jean-François said, um, the Four Per Mill Initiative is a little bit broader than the, the research field and the scientific cooperation. But all of that is uh, complementary, and I think we, we all play a role in our different sphere of influence, but we all complementary again. So. Yes, so first of all, uh, I would like to explain a little bit where this name, this funny name of four per mil is coming from. Well, it, it was just from um, a calculation uh, at the beginning, it's, it's a very basic calculation, comparing the, the quantity of um, carbon in the atmosphere, carbon equivalent in the atmosphere, which is evaluated roughly at um, 830 gigaton of carbon in the atmosphere. And um, the quantity of carbon that the human activity are releasing in the atmosphere every year due to industry, transport, energy, deforestation, and uh, um, change in, uh, in the land use. And uh, the result also coming from the natural vegetation in the ocean uh, being able to capture again some of this uh, carbon release in the atmosphere. But at the end of the day, or more, more precisely at the end of the year, uh, the quantity of carbon release in the atmosphere is an additional roughly 4.3 gigaton of carbon released by those activities. It's quite a lot, but if you compare that figure with the, the quantity of carbon store in, already stored in the soils, we know that those soil contain two to three times more carbon than the atmosphere, fortunately. And if we just take in consideration the 30 or 40 centimeter uh, upper part of the soil of the world, then comparing the 4.3 gigaton of carbon released every year in the atmosphere on addition to the existing one and the roughly 900 gigaton of carbon already present in the soil, then it comes a very easy calculation that an annual increase of uh, 4 per mil or 0.4% of the world soil surface carbon stock could nearly compensate the annual CO2 increase in the atmosphere, CO2 equivalent increase in the atmosphere. 
well, this is a very basic and rough calculation, but the advantage of this calculation is that this figure seems to be small. It means that we can do something, we can act, we can start moving that way. And in addition to a drastic reduction of all our emission that we are doing every year, uh, we can maybe try to compensate a little bit and maybe try to come back to a better situation and uh, uh, mitigate the climate change at the end. So that is the whole idea of this name of four per mil. So I will not come, come in deep on the, why is it so important to store carbon in soil. Most of you already know why. So I just explained that it could help mitigating climate change. And um, one of the most interesting thing is that um, doing so, we will use the photosynthesis, which is a very low cost negative emission technology. And uh, this is some, a gift from nature. And we could use that gift to find a part of the solution of our problem on the climate change. So it's also important because uh, storing carbon in soil will help adapt to climate change. This climate change is already started. And we know that if we increase soil organic matter, then this will help the soil to have a better water retention capacity and also a, a lower sensibility to erosion. So it's good for the structure of the soil together and helps uh, adapting agriculture to climate change. Of course, there is a direct link between the soil organic matter and the soil fertility, and this will help to have a better yield stability, to have a, an improvement in the yield. And so at the end, we will improve the food security and we hopefully will contribute to restore degraded land and degraded soil, which represent 30 to 40% of the, of the world's soil. So the four per mil initiative that it was said before was launched in Paris at the COP25, uh, 21, sorry, uh, at the 1st of December, 2015. And it was, uh, I mean, the, the, it was started with uh, 160 signatory from countries, from NGOs, from uh, scientific institution, from businesses, from uh, um, international organization and so on, and farmers union. So it's really a multi-stakeholder uh, partnership, and this is very important to have to keep that in mind. So the, the initiative is supposed to be organized in two parts, uh, a more action, I mean, an action plan in the field with uh, the development of a multi-stakeholder platform, a little bit like the one that uh, Jean-Francois just presented to you, but more open to all stakeholders. And to facilitate those partnerships, of course. Um, the tool of expert to expertise and evaluate or assess project based of, on a set of reference and indicator. And also um, there will be a scientific program organized as an international research and scientific cooperation program. And I think Sierra Casa is really one of the, the first big stone that are under that part of the initiative and uh, a digital resource center on carbon in soil. And once again, what uh, Circaza is doing and with others is, is already prefigurating that part of what is uh, in the objective of the 4 per mil initiative. So the goal of the initiative, you already understand that, is to increase carbon sequestration in soil as organic matter for increasing food security, adapting agriculture to climate change, mitigate climate change. And all of that being pursued um, under the objective of sustainable development adopted by the United Nations. So if we look at the, the, the main uh, SDGs that are concerned by um, or addressed by the 4 per mil initiative, you will find, of course, number two, zero anger, number 15, life on land, and number 13, action, climate action. But there will be also some uh, action on the on the clean water and sanitation on the six, number one, number six, three, and number 12 on responsible consumption and production. All of that being under the partnership for the goals, I mean, um, mainly under the, this framework of the SDGs. But what was also important for us was to develop a kind of safeguard targets that are indispensable for us to be 
address also by project that will be developed under the four per meal initiative. And the, those targets, I forgot targets are human rights, respect of human rights, the respect of the land tenure rights and the welfare well-being. So one year after his birth, its birth, um, the initiative adopted the governance. And this governance is organized in four entities. The first one being the forum of partners. This is the consultative body where all the, the partners can share information and discuss and develop partnership. The second one is made uh, out of the members, the consortium of the members. That's where the decision making decision making body works and it is not open for uh, uh, for profit or commercial organization because uh, we, we try to avoid interaction between uh, private objective and goals and uh, those public and international goals that we are uh, promoting then the scientific uh, part of the initiative is represented by the scientific and technical committee. I will come back on that later. And um, the oral initiative is animated by the executive secretariat that I have the pleasure and the honor to, to manage. So this is just basic how to become a member and part of the difference you have understood, you need to become a partner first by signing the first declaration of intention. And then if you are a non-profit or a non-commercial organization, then you can sign the second document to become a member. So all members are partners already, but not all partners are members. This is a, just an overview and uh, Jean-Francois give you a, a very large view of all the partners and country partners and members of all the, the different initiative and, and, and project. So this is only for the four per meal initiative. And you can see that there are also a lot of um, logos of the, the main institutions that are working with us. Of course, you can find the main uh, international organization, but also some uh, big uh, funders over there, some big research institution and uh, NGOs and, and others. So far, we have um, 359 signatory of the Paris Declaration. That means 359 partners, including 42 countries and provinces, 12 international organizations, 14 foundation and development bank, 110 NGOs, 80 research and education bodies and university and 40 farmers organization and 61 enterprise or business. Among those 359 uh, partners, we count 183 members uh, that are part of the decision-making process. The chair of the initiative is Dr. Ibrahim Mayaki, the executive secret secretary of uh, NEPAD in Africa. And the vice chair is Mr. Stéphane Le Foll, the prime uh, before the ex minister of agriculture in France um, a few years ago. So I told you that the scientific and technical committee uh, is given to the initiative is a scientific basis. And you have a view of all the, the 14 members of this uh, uh, scientific and technical committee. They are coming from those countries. It means that there is a balance between men and women and also multidisciplinary and uh, region of origin in, uh, of the world. One of the first work of this STC was to work on the set of reference criteria for evaluation of project and action. You have an overview of all those uh, indicators, but they are grouped in family. You can find on this part, the safeguard uh, target that I mentioned to you initially. Then of course, the initiative is dealing with soil carbon and land conservation or restoration, which is here. And then you have the three main objective food security, mitigation, and adaptation with all indicator and criteria under. There is a specific document which is available on our website, www.4p1000.org. They also work, this STC, on the four pillar of the International Research and Scientific Cooperation Program, and this is a subject which is more for CIRCASA on IRG. Um, and you can see the four pillars. I will not come on detail on those, but you can find some 
big uh, set of uh, objectives that are very common and shared between all the initiative and project about carbon uh, storage. So we open our website and it's available. You can find some information over there. You can find also some news and resources and event, and you will find how to get involved if your organization want to join the 4 Million initiative. They are more than welcome. And uh, as uh, Jean-Francois mentioned, and it's a little bit com comparable to the, to the UCP platform, we open a collaborative platform, which is wider in objective than the, the OCP one, but uh, we, we are working at the possibility to build a passerelle between those two platforms and some others, because there are so many interesting information to share and, and way to contribute and partners to, to be partners, then it's, it's important to, be, to have an interactive collaboration between all those platforms and all those projects and initiatives. So very quickly, this is the, the main meeting that we will have this year because they are all uh, ahead of us. Uh, and we will have, as usual, our four per meal initiative day uh, during the COP. It will be in Santiago uh, this year in Chile, and uh, it will be on the 11th of December. So. Um, there, you are all invited because we open also to the friends of the Four Per Mil initiative that day for, for that meeting to share information and the way we are working. Okay, so thank you very much for your attention and I'm ready also to answer your question. Thank you, Paul, for your presentation. So I have, uh, I see a lot of questions passing in the chat room and in the Q&A uh, tool. So I see um, there's someone raising his hand, so I'm going to give him the floor so he, he can um, he can ask his question. So please, uh, Martin, if you can uh, activate your microphone so you can ask your question to all the attenders. <laughs> Yes, we can hear you. Okay, so Martin Chantigny on the, on the line. Thank, thank you. Uh, so, well, I already asked that question to Pam during the, the presentation. First, I would just like to thank the three speakers for very interesting presentations. And uh, so my, my question was, well, uh, to Pam, but maybe to uh, either of the other uh, uh, presenters, um, if there has been any uh, discussion so far or, in, or intent by the different networks to, uh, in addition to modeling efforts, to add maybe some uh, artificial intelligent uh, components. Yes, thank you, Martin. Uh, Pamela, if you want to answer this question so everybody can hear the answer. Sure. Um, I guess my response is generally that in uh, our discussions, at least at the February Integrated Research Group meeting, there was a discussion about, you know, for monitoring and reporting um, opportunities uh, using big data uh, that might be out there, might even be in uh, more in the private sector sphere or within the, uh, the value chain um, and the idea of, of how we roll up farm to regional information and then even up to global scales. Um, but I don't think we actually addressed artificial intelligence in particular and the idea of sort of that machine learning or um, um, accessing databases. And I, I think where you might be thinking is that you know, if there's these uh, collaborative platforms and, and um, databases that have been established for the, the modeling, can there be even more um, you know, analysis of those using artificial intelligence. And I, that's something I think we can bring to the different networks, at least in the, the IRG. I don't think it was something that has been addressed specifically yet. Okay. I think while I have the floor, can I add just one more thing? Um, sorry, I, I realized that at the beginning, I had maybe assumed that many people had uh, some awareness of the GRA since they had been um, invited to this webinar through associations with that, uh, but just in distinguishing uh, it from Sister Cass and for Neil's uh, projects and some of the questions that have come up, uh, GRA members are essentially countries 
and, and uh, I believe there are about 56 countries who are now members of the GRA, but there are many um, partners that uh, are associated uh, with the GRA. Uh, so on the council themselves, they are appointed by uh, countries. And the Secretariat is run through um, New Zealand uh, is supporting that. And if you're interested in becoming uh, members or, or partners with the, the GRA, if your country is not currently um, contacting that, Secretariat is a good way to go. Thank you, Pamela. I hope uh, Martin is an uh, answer to your question. Yes, well, that, that, that gives information. I was just curious about that, you know, if that aspect uh, had been uh, considered so far. I'm, uh, I'm far from being an expert of that, but I, I can see that there is a rising interest uh, worldwide for possibly possible uh, to, to, to extract more information from, you know, very large data sets. May, may I answer? May I give a piece of answer also? Um, yes, of course. Oh. Yes, just um, this is a very interesting question. And uh, the fact is that um, there are many, many databases. And the, the problem is the, the way we can uh, uh, interact or make an interface between all those databases to be able to get uh, a big uh, information system with uh, in artificial um, artificial intelligence behind that. The thing also is important is to be aware of the, the property of, the, of those data. Because um, if it's, we are talking about an open database that could be accessible by everybody and that uh, everybody can uh, um, load some information on it, um, that would be great. But it would be difficult also to uh, put all those data and give the power to only one or two international, multinational uh, uh, enterprise that will be able to use that information to sell product or to um, have the power on farmers. So it, it's important to to being able to work on an open doc um, situation and being able also to share all those information for the profit of all and mainly for the profit of the farmers, because as Jean-Francois showed clearly, they are, they are looking for some advice, they are looking for some information, and they are looking for some uh, data on practices. Yeah, thank you, Paul. So I see another question from Nazrin. Is there any provision from African countries in terms of participation and inclusion? So maybe you can answer to this question, Paul? Yes, uh, we we had uh, we organized in October last year uh, first regional conference for Africa uh, of the four per mil. By chance, our chair is uh, Dr. Ibrahim Mayaki from Nepad, and uh, his uh, his everyday work is to to work for the development of Africa. So, definitely, uh, Africa country and actor uh, stakeholders, Af African farmers mainly, and scientists have the place uh, in, in all those, uh, those initiatives and projects. And uh, we are working with them. We are very proud to have three, uh, three members of the STC of the Fopa Mill coming from Africa. So it, it's important to keep that number and to keep in touch with all the farmers, all the, the countries, the institution, the international organization in Africa, and also all the scientists and, and the farmers. Thank you. So I see, thank you for your answer. I see another question regarding the four per mil poll. So if you want to answer also is um, anonymous, but it's four per mil defined goals to increase organic carbon. Will biochar fit uh, this definition according to four per mil? Uh, yes, Paul, so if you can answer this question. Yes, sorry. Um, sorry, my, my mic was mute. Um, I said, yes, of course, we are. It is easy to speak about soil organic carbon, but uh, we are also talking about carbon storing. Um, the, I make the difference because at the beginning, people imagined that the Four Per Mill Initiative was an initiative to dig a big hole and put some carbon in the hole and just fill the hole. So it was not the idea. 
but of course, Bioshar is very interesting and promising practices. And uh, we already have uh, um, seen some project uh, on that. And we are working with some uh, institution uh, dealing with Bioshar and there are already members of the Four Per Million Initiative. So of course, this is a very promising practices and we will also encourage it whenever it will be completely assessed on the scientific point of view, of course. Here is uh, Jean-François Susanna. Uh, just uh, to add a few words, so indeed uh, biochar is seen as an interesting and promising uh, practice, but uh, still uh, we need to be uh, assessing the life cycle uh, of the biochar uh, to see uh, the full effect on climate, because um, the uh, way the biomass is produced uh, between before it is uh, going to biochar and the way energy is uh, substituted uh, from fossil fuels um, are important aspects to understand uh, the sustainability uh, and the climate impacts of biochar. Okay, thank you for those answers. And I also saw a message passing of Marla that is was asking if there are some contacts in Mexico. So if, if someone has a, an answer for Marla. Yeah, thank you for the question. Uh, uh, for CIRCASA and uh, IRG, uh, we don't have uh, so far strong uh, contacts with Mexico, but uh, in both cases, uh, you are welcome uh, to connect uh, with us. And uh, I'd just like to mention that uh, we could also uh, benefit from having your contribution on the open collaborative platform. So uh, please be part of those online communities. Okay, thank you. I also see a message passing by Andres Bosma uh, regarding the previous question of Martin. And he say that ISRIC is using um, artificial intelligence, big data, just that it takes uh, legacy data to produce a worldwide soy map um, at 2050 um, meters resolution. Uh, a major update will be launched with support of CIRCASA this year. Yes, and um, thank you, Andres. So if someone uh, wants to um, express himself by raising his hands, we can uh, give him the floor so we can uh, answer all these, his questions. Yes, so I see a rising hand from Benjamin. So I'm going to uh, give you the floor. Please uh, activate your microphone. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. This is Roland Kröve from uh, AFC in Lethbridge. Uh, hi, Pamela. Hi, um, Paul. And hi, Francois, uh, Jean Francois. Um, I have a question regarding the interaction uh, between um, GRA or Global Research Alliance and the Agricultural Model Intercomparison Project that's run by NOAA. Um, I've been a bit in touch with, with Cynthia Rosenzweig and uh, know from that end that they do a lot of um, modeling studies, especially in developing countries. Um, they're looking into greenhouse gas emissions as well as uh, carbon modeling. And I'm wondering whether there is a potential to have the two groups kind of interlink. Thank you for the question. Uh, I actually uh, tried uh, together with Cynthia to get uh, the uh, to have uh, the uh, AGMIP program uh, that you mentioned, uh, an associated member of the GRA. And I think this, this is happening currently. So the connection between GRA and AGMIP are strengthened. And I think this is very useful. And uh, I'm also um, actually a member of the steering of uh, AGMIP. And I've been raising the issue of uh, working on soils with AGMIP to make co further connection with 4 per mail and uh, with CIRCASA. So I think uh, you, 
your views are, are really welcome on this. Thank you. Yes, so if uh, Pamela Lu wants to add something, uh, this is the last question we're going to take. We don't have time to take all the questions. We are sorry. Uh, but if no, we're going, never going to finish. So I'm going to gather all your questions and try to answer it by contacting you uh, as far as we can. So if Pamela and Paul want to add something, uh, uh, we're going to close this uh, meeting. No, I, I just should say thank you for the opportunity to present a little bit about the integrative research group today. And as you can see, there is connections and complementary activities going on amongst these three things. Thank you. And, uh, and for me, so I, uh, I join Pamela to, to that thanks uh, to open the floor to the Four Permit Initiative and give us the opportunity to present uh, that. This is, we are at the beginning of a process and. Uh, uh, people need to be um, a little bit patient about us. We are not going to create more platform and more things together. We will try to concentrate all the data and to make the people working together. That's, I think, that's our own objective and uh, our common objective to all of those projects and initiatives. Thank you to all. Yes, thank you, everybody. And uh, thank you for participating to this webinar. And. Uh, we are certainly uh, glad to have you uh, supporting those initiatives and uh, engaging on soil carbon and uh, related issues. Thank you. Okay, so thank you all for your presentations, for your comments and everything. So I really, I'm going to try to gather all these questions so we can answer separately. Uh, so it is the end of the webinar. Thank you again for assisting. And uh, just to remember that this is a, a webinar part of a series of webinars that are com coming in the next months. So we will keep um, sharing the information. And thank you and bye-bye. Goodbye. Goodbye.